Does this dress make me look pregnant? You guys, this is a baby reveal video. I'm just joking. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Feeling young, but they treat me like the OG. And they want the Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sasha. I am simply Sasha Fierce on all social media platforms. If you are not subscribed, you know what I'm gonna tell you to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Also, also hit the bell button so you can be notified every single time I post. This video is sponsored by Celsius. I'm just joking. It's not sponsored by Celsius. But Celsius, if you want to sponsor your girl, go ahead and give me a call. This video is going to be a little bit different. That's why I have my Celsius. Because this video, I, I need the energy for this. Because we are talking everything influencing in this video. We're talking about everything influencing. Hold on. We're talking about everything influencing in, in this video. That's why I have my phone here because you guys asked some questions on my Instagram. I put like a Q&A on my Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow your girl, okay? Go ahead and follow. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sasha. I am simply Sasha Fierce. I have a hundred, I have over a hundred thousand on Instagram. I have 76 on TikTok. Also, just to give you guys a little background about me and what I do, I have made over six figures this year as a full-time influencer. I was also awarded the um, Snapchat Black Creator Program, where they gave me $120,000 for the year. I've also been blessed to work with pretty big brands. And as a lot of you know, I am an Amazon influencer. So this year, I was able to take a few brand trips with Amazon. I went to London with them for a premiere of one of their TV shows. They flew me out to London. That was so cool. Also, I got to go to Texas with them for another event that they had. I love, love, love working with Amazon. I am an Amazon girl to the end okay i'm an amazon girl so um those are, that's just a little bit about myself that's the question on instagram and one of the things that i wanted to do was an influencer q a because i am officially been a full-time influencer for a year now and you guys it has been a roller coaster there's so much that i have learned this year so much i wish i had known sooner and what i feel like is with this influencer world like everything be hush hush sometimes it's like I literally have to dig information out of people or I have to like redo so much research on my own and I just wish it could be easier. So that's why I'm here. I'm also going to be giving you guys just some insights and a little bit of tea. Let me give you a little bit of tea. If you are asking why am I going to take advice from her about being an influencer, you don't have to take my advice. I am just telling you guys what I have learned and hopefully it can help you in your journey if you want to become an influencer Anyways, let's get into it okay so the first question was how did i start my influencer journey okay so i may be dating myself but when i started i was a blogger i had i still have it but i have a website and i would write blogs on my website this um, started in about 2018 uh, that's when I decided I wanted to like take it seriously because before that I like I wanted to do it but I never actually took the initiative so it was I remember it was January 2018 and I was sitting in my house and I was like you guys I need to just take the leap of faith because what was scary for me was like, my family and my friends follow me on Instagram so I was like this is gonna be so cringe because they're gonna see me like posting like all of this content like I'm an influencer and I'm not or like I'm a blogger and I'm not and, like I have a lot of followers and I don't so I was like scared of what people would think and then I was like girl just get out of your head if this is something that you want to do just go ahead and do it do not be scared of what other people think because look they're gonna think whatever they think. What they think has absolutely nothing to do with me. That's between them and their own issues or whatever. So I was like, girl, if you wanna do this, go ahead and do it. Do not let anybody stop you. Don't think about what other people are going to say or what they're gonna think or that it's cringy. Just take the leap of faith and do what you want to do and what's gonna make you happy because to me, one of my worst fears, one of my worst fears is 
me like being on my deathbed and not being able to say I actually went after my you're gonna win some and you're gonna lose some but I want to be the one to say I actually gave it a try I wasn't too scared I wasn't afraid I didn't let what other people thought and everything stop me I went after my dreams let's go back to the question so what I did was in 2018 I sat down January 2018 I sat down and I researched how to create a website I bought a domain I named it W I named it simply Sasha Fierce and that's kind of where we took off. I started, I always loved fashion, so I always loved talking about it. And I would notice, like, when I would go out places, people would always ask, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? Where'd you get that from? Da, 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 da. So I was like, let me put this all in a blog. This is where you can see everything I'm wearing and what I'm doing and where I'm going. So basically, that's what I did. And then in 2020, the whole world shut down because of COVID, as you guys know. But honestly, it was one of those times that because between 2018 and 2020, I still dibbled and dabbled. Like I still worked a full time job. So between those times, I still like would not take content too, too seriously because I still had a full time job. And I had a mortgage at that time, too, because we had just purchased the house. So it was a lot going on. So when the world shut down at, in 2020, that's when I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing nothing. Let's go ahead and take this thing seriously. And basically, that's what I did. I put everything in motion and I didn't have no break. I, there was no breaks after that. I was just like, Sasha, let's just go full force. And then it was like little things that kept going into place. I really wish that someone had sat down with me and told me all of this stuff when I decided to become an influencer because you guys, like I said, it was hard to figure out how much do I charge? Um, how do I get brand deals? How do you get PR? How do you get invited to influencer events? Like all of that stuff was just like, wait, wait, how do you do this? How do you do that? So I am so happy to share this information with you guys. And if there's any questions that I did not answer in this video, leave them below and I'll do a second video answering all of your other questions that you have. Uh, another question is, am I signed to an agency? No, I'm not signed to an agency yet. I did take meeting with agencies um, this past week, so I probably will be signing to one very, very soon. Um, it's just I want to find the right agency that's the right match for me. Um, and I have heard so many horror stories about agencies. I'm not going to lie, you guys. Agencies really are so um, scary to me. I'm trying to level up in my influencer career. So having a management agency would just make sense. And it'll kind of take some things off of my plate because I have to, like, being able to, like, pitch to brands and negotiate contracts and all of that. That's a whole nother job. So it's a job that I would easily give to a management company. I just haven't found the right one yet. But... Fingers crossed that I do. So this question was, how long until you started getting brand deals? And who was your first partnership with? I started doing partnerships unpaid. Like when you're starting off, you're going to do like what I did. I'm not saying that you're going to do, but I accepted a lot of gifted collaborations. Um, just to get my name out there and just to get a little bit more exposure. So I think my first collaboration was with a uh, black owned business. Um, and it was like a natural body care brand where she did like soaps and lotions and stuff. And I believe that, that one was a gifted collaboration. Um, and that was maybe, I want to say maybe only like six months to after I said I was going to start taking my journey seriously. So after that, like a lot of that work that I did for the first like year, any like a lot of those brand partnerships that I did for the first year were either really really cheap because I didn't know how much to charge or they were totally gifted collaborations so I feel like if you're someone who's starting as an influencer you can do a lot of gifted collaborations because that'll get your name out there and it'll get you more exposure especially like if they post you on their websites or on their Instagram that'll get you more exposure if you do well enough then a brand will come back to you and they'll be like oh my gosh we really love that partnership Let's keep it going and let's pay. Let's, you know, talk about a paid partnership. Yeah. Even today with my following, I still do some gifted collaborations. It just has to make sense to me. Yeah. If you're going to give gift me something that I really needed or that I was already going to go out and buy and it makes sense. And sometimes it's just like organic stuff. Like I told you guys about the Celsius. I drink Celsius almost every single day. 
So I spent my money on Celsius. So, so Celsius would like to send me some. I'll go ahead and take them because I already buy them all the time. A lot of influencers do start off with gifted collaborations and then move their way up to paid partnerships. How many followers did you start with and how did you have the confidence to keep going? Instagram maybe had maybe like 500 followers like they was all like my friends and family when I first started or maybe like a thousand maybe maybe I don't even think it was that much um and they were all friends and family so when they was like girl wait what you doing why are you posting that and why are you posting that and why are you posting that so um and then I started to gain traction um what gave me the confidence to keep going what gave me the confidence to keep going is that it's something that it's it was something that I really wanted. And I feel like when you're walking in your purpose, God just keeps opening doors for you and he just keeps making things work out for you. And that's what happened. It's like opportunities were coming and like things like that I didn't even imagine would happen just started happening. Because like for example, when I went to London, I was the one I didn't even have a hundred thousand followers yet. And I was with girls who had hundreds of thousands of followers. Amazon picked three P3 three girls from their Amazon influencer program. I was one of the three. And I'm sure the program has about, I don't even know, thousands and thousands and thousands of girls in their program. Um, and they only picked three. And I was one of the three. And I wasn't even 100,000 followers in. I was with one girl who maybe had like 300,000 followers. Another one had over 100,000 on all platforms. I think I was still like at 50, 60,000. I was so emotional because I was like, I'm getting flown out. And I'm here with people. And I, and you know, and I just kept being invited in rooms that I was, I was like, why am I here? Like, who put my name on this list and are they going to escort me out when they know that I'm not supposed to be here like that's kind of how I felt like I was like why am I here why am I in this room but you know what I was meant to be there God put me there for a reason he he saw something in me and I I did the work I put in the time and I put in the work behind it I stayed consistent I post every single day I stayed consistent and I and I put the work in behind it and, you know, at that point, I just felt like I was walking in my purpose. So it just gave me the confidence to keep going because I, I felt like people saw that. People were noticing that, you know, this girl's putting in work. You know, she's doing what she needs. That gave me the confidence to keep going. Like, like when I see that my hard work is paying off, and it doesn't have to be something big like being flown out to London. Like something small like when... Um, people hop like when one of my followers hop in my DMs and like there was one person who DM'd me and she says that she's a cancer survivor and that after she um I'm not gonna get emotional. I'm not gonna get emotional. But um she followed me and she was like I gave her the confidence to start um I gave her the confidence to start dressing again and to, to, to feel better about herself and dress up and put on makeup and to do her hair again and just feel confident about herself. That's what keeps me going. That is what keeps me going because what? putting on clothes and showing you what I like and showing you how I style certain things gives you the confidence to keep going after such a traumatic event in your life. You don't got to tell me nothing more. You don't have to tell me nothing more. And one thing that also keeps me going is knowing that if there's just one person, just one person who looks at me and who looks at my story, because remember, I tell you guys, I was a teenage mother. I had my son at 18. There were so many things against me, right? So um, when I, if I can just encourage one person to go after their dreams, no matter what, right? No matter what they've been through, no matter what they're going through, but to go after their dreams, just because they saw me go after my dreams, I'm good. I have done my work here, and I, that's that's basically what I want to do. I just want to encourage people not to be kept in a box. Do what you want to do and how you want to do it, and everything else will follow, period. As an influencer, would you host a meet and greet in Miami? Y'all don't want to meet me. Y'all do not want to meet me. I am boring. Like, I may seem, you know, I'm, I'm just like a boring person, I feel like. Why would you want to meet somebody so boring as me? Uh, and if the girls want to do it, let's do it. Let's do it. If we want to meet here in Miami, 
let's do a meet and greet if you know if that's something that we really want to do and that it makes sense because I would love to meet you guys in person because I feel like you guys are my people like y'all are homegirls like we locked it I would do a meet and greet in Miami because that's where I live so yeah that's one of the answers to the question how do you decide what parts of your life you want to share on social media so for me I decided that I'm not gonna I, I don't really share my family on social media one because my son is older he doesn't want to be on camera he um, has made that very very clear please leave me alone he's 18 now so he's an adult he has that he can make that decision even if he was a child because he made that decision a long time ago that he doesn't want to be on camera and that's cool my thing is I signed up for this you know I signed up for this career uh, he did not my family members did not so I don't try to put put the camera in their face I you know like what I'm with my family I'm with them the cameras are away uh, I'm not putting my phone like oh my gosh what are you doing right now let me show them what are you doing right now let me show them let me let me let me videotape you I, I don't I don't do that because I feel like this career that I've chosen takes up so much of my time that um, when I do have my time with my family I just want it to be my time with my family I don't want to mix the two I did decide that like when I first started like when I first started, I decided this is my career. I decided I wanted to do this. I decided I wanted to put myself on the internet and in the eye of people. So I'm gonna be the one to take the criticism that comes along with this job, to take the um, to take the good with it and take the bad with it as well. Because one thing you can do is you can talk about me. You can talk about me all you want to, but when you start talking about my child or my family members, gloves are off at that point. Gloves are off. So that's one of the reasons I decided to keep my personal life personal. And, you know, there's in this influencer world, there's not much balance because a lot of influencers, they show their day-to-day -day life. So you see everything. You see all of the good and you see all of the bad and that's cool if that you'll see in like the coming months that i'm going to get a little bit more personal with you but the thing is with this career it's really hard like there's such a thin line between your personal life and your work life because basically your work life is your personal life like if i'm doing like vlogs and i'm taking you when i'm going to target and i'm showing you when i'm cleaning my house and i'm doing this and i'm showing you my shower routine and i'm doing that like that's personal right so you know I really pick and choose what I want to show and what I don't and that's just me personally that's just me that's what I chose to do I chose not to share my family and I chose not to share um, certain things but that's just because I made that personal decision it's not for everybody it's not for every influencer I don't show relationships I don't show anything about you guys are gonna get me all me and just me baby but as I get I do think that as I get a little bit, as we go into the new year, I am going to show a little bit more, just a tiny bit more of my life. Someone asked, how do you get invited to influencer events? Um, when I go to influencer events, I don't even know how I get invited. Honestly, like why am I, how did I make it on this list? Um, but when I do ask a lot of the brands say hashtags. So when I am posting on like Instagram and sometimes TikTok, I put hashtag Miami blogger, hashtag Miami content creator, hashtag Miami, Miami influencer. So I use those hashtags and I feel like those still work. People say hashtags are dead. Hashtags is not dead. Okay. Because when I ask, how did you find me? And I have been to a lot of events. I have been to events with um, Laneige. Is it Laneige or Laneige? I always forget how to say it. But I have been to events with them. I have went to um, a lunch with the St. Kitts Tourism Board. Uh, I have been to makeup events. I have been, I just recently, like last week, went on a cruise with a um a beauty brand. and i went to like a grand opening of a restaurant last week and i like literally i have been to so many events and that's the only thing that i can see that i'm doing and what you can do is reach out to pr companies in your area like you can search like miami pr companies um and reach out to them and ask them to put you on their list Normally because the people who are reaching out to me are pr companies so you can reach google pr companies in your area and reach out to them like hey 
my name is Sasha I live here in Miami I'm an influencer I would love to be added to your list of events and I believe that that's a good way to get your foot into events um, also I know a lot of my influencer friends who do have management their managers are the ones who get them invited to events so their managers have connections with PR companies and it's like hey I have an influencer here she'll be great for your upcoming event um, so if you do have a manager, that's something that they can handle as well. Like I said, I don't have a management team as of yet. So everybody who finds me, they just find me organically. I have not reached out to any PR companies as of yet neither. But I do know that that's a good way because that's, again, how some of my other influencer friends get invited and get put on lists. And also, if you have a friend, because I always invite my, my influencer friends to events as my plus one. So if you have a friend who's an influencer, be like, girl, I'll go with you. I'll go with you to your event. I'll be your plus one. I'll be your plus one, sis. So that's another way. Okay, so someone asked about being an Amazon influencer. So I am an Amazon influencer. How I started in the Amazon influencer program was I literally just went to the website www.amazoninfluencerprogram.com, I believe. I'm, I'll put it. I'll put it in the description bar below the actual website. You just go on that website and you apply. But when I applied, remember, I already, I had like a website and I had, um, I don't remember exactly how many followers I had on Instagram when I applied, but I do remember I had a website. So I put in my website address um, as one of the, um, because they asked like, where are you going to be posting this stuff? Like, where are you going to be posting like your Amazon stuff for you to drink, gain traction? So I remember I did put my blog website um, and I did put like my Instagram website. I do not understand. I do not remember exactly how many followers I had when I applied for it and they accepted me into it because I think I only applied one time and they accepted me into a it. A few people, they have applied a few times. Um, I know you have to have like following and uh, I'm not sure the exact criteria, like I can't tell you exactly how many followers you have to have to be accepted. They do have an Instagram page too, so you can go onto their Instagram page and you can also go onto their website and they will tell you exactly um, how to apply, walk you through it, um, and then they'll either accept you or they won't, but they'll give you like a little reason of why they didn't accept you and then you can kind of go off of that. So one of the questions was how to get gifted PR, how to get on PR list. So I get a lot of PR. Um, one way is I do tag brands. Like if I'm using like your product, like say I'm using, say I have Celsius, like the Celsius. I'm still doing Celsius for example. And I tag Celsius like in my story, like, hey, you guys, I'm having a Celsius today to help me get through the day. I'm going to tag Celsius. I know. Um, I forgot what was the last brand that I tagged I, there was a brand that I tagged that I was organically using in my story and I tagged them in my story and then the next thing I got a DM for them that's like thank you so much for tagging me in your story what's your address we want to send you some good other way is um, if a brand does reach out to you and um, they want to collab but they can't do a gifted I mean they can't pay right now because they say that they don't have a budget then you can also reply with, okay, well, you can always put me on your PR list and, you know, maybe we can work together in the future. Um, that's another way. Also, you can just slide in their DMs, baby. Just slide in their brand DMs and be like, hey, my name is Sasha. I would love to work with you. Um, do you have any campaigns at this time? Or do you have um, an influencer marketing manager that I can reach out to you and say, um, you know, I would love to be added to your PR list. It, it goes either way. If they say, no, we don't have any, um, if they, they say, no, we don't have a budget right now, well, I would love to be added to your PR list. Or a lot of time brands just DM me like, hey, we love your content. We would love to send you a package. You know, can we have an email? Uh, we, can we have an address to send you a package? And then you can either say, yeah, sure. Here's my, here's my address. Um, to send a package or not. It's, it's up to you. Um, but I can't tell you, as an influencer, it does become a lot because you get a lot of stuff in the mail. So I would say to like take stuff that you would actually use and want to provide insight on and just not say yes to every single PR package because I don't need a PR package of cookies because I'm not going to put your cookies on my story. 
period. I don't need a PR package of chips unless they're salt and vinegar. Unless they're salt and vinegar, then, you know, we may be able to work together. Like, you may be doing something with that one. And unless they are the good salt and vinegar brand, you may be doing your big one with them. Being an influencer is my full-time job. So, I cannot pay my bills with your products. So, I do pick and choose what products I do accept and what products I don't accept because it just becomes too much. Like, my house is... My house has so much products. Um, but I do do like giveaways to like my um, my audience on like Instagram. And if you're in my newsletter and things like that, I do send out uh, giveaways so I can give back to my followers, give back to my community because y'all my people and I mess with y'all. How to get brand deals kind of works the same way as PR. You can slide into their DMs. Um, you can also try to search for a influencer marketing manager for the company. So you can always Google like pretty little things, influencer marketing manager, and see if you can get an email from them. You can slide, you can, so you can slide in their DMs. Or now a lot of the companies, they have it on their website. they like, you know, if you would like to collab with us, here is the email address to collab. So you can go on their website. And sometimes if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, then you'll see like, oh, if you would like to collab with with us this is the email address so you can email them um, and you can email them like your media kit and like your pitch and all of that so you can kind of get um, get your foot in the door we talked about brand deals we talked about PR we talked about events um, and those are just like some of the questions that you guys had for me um, about being a, an influencer if you guys want me to do a part two to this video where I get a little bit more in depth, have like more questions that you want me to answer and you want me to like answer like your specific questions or you have, if you want me to get more in depth about this, um, I can do a part two to this video. Comment below and I'll definitely check the comments and then I'll do a part two to this video if you guys want to know anything else. But just to sum all of this up, what I would say, one of the toughest things to do as an influencer is to stay consistent, but staying consistent is a game changer. It will change your entire life. So stay consistent. Um, don't be afraid. Don't be like, oh, it's cringy. Don't be like, oh my gosh, people are going to be da 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 Don't think about nobody but yourself. Think about yourself and think about your pockets, okay? Um, but do what you love and do what you want to do. One of the reasons, the main reason I became an influencer was because I love fashion. I was too short to be a fashion model, so I went for an influencer. But um, because I love fashion and I just love sharing fashion with you guys and I love making people feel good and I love to be able to share my love for fashion with with other people so stay authentic and true to yourself and who you are and just have fun with it because i think that's what makes this job so cool is that sometimes i just really get to have fun with what i'm doing because i love fashion i love playing in clothes and all of this is still fun for me and i still love what i do and i hope you guys really like this video um, like I said, if you have any other questions, just go ahead and comment them below and I will definitely get to them. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.